Welcome to CSET Biology TCP. Today we're looking at the January 2024 Human and Social Biology paper. We're looking particularly at question number one. I would have already done question three and five, which are already on YouTube. Other questions are on my private platform. And if you have interest in doing private classes, private tutoring, feel free to reach out to me. Short-sightedness and long-sightedness are two diseases which affect the eye. Name one of the disease associated with the eye and describe how the disease develops. I have given two, but remember, for your exam, you should only answer what is asked, which is, of course, to give one. Glaucoma is a condition in which the pressure of a fluid within the eye increases due to the flow of aqueous humor from the eye being blocked. It can lead to damage of the optic nerves and eventually blindness. Another disease is cataract, which refers to a cloudy white area that forms in the lens. And it's usually seen by looking at the person's eye. It develops slowly and as it increases in size, it leads to a cloudy blurred vision you might see a ring around light we call that halo and usually it is more frequent or common among older persons it does not mean that it cannot be seen or it does not happen to persons who are younger let us also make reference to astigmatism which is pretty much caused by uneven curvature of a cornea and the lens. And we also want to remember old sightedness. All those are common form of diseases that are associated with the eyes. State one form of treatment for the disease named in AI. Now glaucoma can be treated by eye drops and that will pretty much reduce the flow of the aqueous humor. Or we could use laser treatment or surgery to remove the blockage. Cataract can be treated by surgery to remove the clouded lens or we, the cloudiness around that lens, or we could also remove the lens and replace it with artificial lens. Again, be reminded, you are asked for one, only give one. Do not waste the exam time, you will not get more time or more marks. Figure 1 and Figure 2 show light from an object passing through the cornea and lens of the eye. Now, under normal circumstances, this area here would show that which we refer to as short-sightedness. Show short-sightedness. While this area here would show long-sightedness. Let's remove those. In which of the two figures, one or two, is the object, let us look at the word object here, is the object being clearly seen? Now here, the object falls behind the retina. Here, the object falls on the retina. So, who would have been our answer for this question? Observe how it is answered. I just wrote the two. No waste of time. Identify the process which has occurred in order for the object to be clearly seen. Now, all that is required here is to write accommodation. I have done what some students would have done. Accommodation. The lens. It says to identify. Look at that word here. Identify. You just need to do this. You don't need to write all this. The lens change, changes its shape. To bend the light, if this is not required here, do I have written it? It is only requiring the question that follows. And usually when you make an error like this and you get to the other question, it would have clearly shown you that you are describing what happens instead of identify. Identify, name, list, state. So all you need to do is to write accommodation. Three, describe the physical changes that occur in the eyes during the process identified. So here we are now giving all the details that is required. Now remember, in describing a process, you could draw a diagram and 
annotate the diagram that is acceptable to as a description. But here I've used prose. For a distant object, the ciliary muscle relax while the suspensory ligament contracts. This causes the lens to pull thin, focusing the image on the retina. The opposite is true for near object. The ciliary muscles will contract, causing the suspensory ligaments to become slack. This causes the lens to shorten and become bulge, thus focusing on the retina. Remember, please answer what is asked. Here, I've taken the time out to show you how a good answer is written and how a poor answer is written, one that would waste your time and get you no extra marks. This is another nice one. And for some reason, whenever students see a graph on a paper, they interpret it as a question not to be answered. They don't even bother to read what it is asking about. They just don't want to do it. And if teachers are listening, I'm not saying that I'm the greatest teacher, probably I'm not even close. But I'm saying to teachers, just get our students to identify independent and dependent variable from around grade nine there that the graph skill can develop, right? Bit by bit, just give them a bit. Remember, our independent variable is the cause and our responding variable is the effect. I think I probably have some videos on that, but if not, you can ask me and I could put up some or make some. All right, so usually our independent variable is on the x-axis, and this is going to be our x-axis. And our dependent variable is on the y-axis. So it is as a result of what happens on the x-axis while we are getting the reflection of what is on the y-axis. This type of graph is not an histogram. It is a combined bar graph, or some might call it a complex bar graph. And it can be a little more complex than we're seeing now. So don't get uh, carried away as to the type of graph. It is a bar graph, not an histogram. I know usually we are hearing about bar graphs with just one bar, but that is probably primary school. Now we are getting up into this business, and we have to appreciate that, of course they become a little more complex. All right, so here we are looking at figure three. It shows a comparison of a number of debt per 100, resulting from diabetes and hypertension. There is no by our HSB paper without these two words, hypertension and diabetes. So you have to get used to that. That, that is where you're going to get your first marks from uh, because you know that these are going to be on your paper. In males and females of different age group. Awesome. So you want to pay attention to the graph. You want to make sure that you understand all parts of the graph before you attempt to answer the question. So first, we're seeing two different color bars. So then we need to look at the key. So here we have the key. It says male is a black and the striation. There are the streak refers to female. We are also observing that one side of a graph shows diabetes, while the other side shows hypertension. It's also important to know that on the y-axis, the name here on the y-axis is the number of deaths. And the name for the x-axis is diabetes for one side and hypertension. So probably you could look at this, right? But they have combined them. Don't get carried away. Everything is fine. No need to worry. The other graph also has a title. A number of death per disease by age and gender. That is the title of your graph. Usually you're writing this in uppercase at the top of your graph leaf if you were doing your SBA or if you are required to draw this. Uh, it's always nice when you're going to the exam to carry your geometry set, uh, preferably a piece of string, so that you can measure these and probably get them a little more accurate as to the reading. I did an estimation. Let us look at what happens here. Identify the gender, male or female, that has the higher number of death. And we're supposed to suggest one reason why this may have occurred. Now, observe what it asks of us. is for us to identify the gender, be it male, 
or a female that has the highest number of deaths, right? So it doesn't matter if it is diabetes or hypertension, being that we're looking at one graph, it refers to everything. How did I go about answering this question? In answering the question, I chose to look at females first. So I did the reading here and I added that to this and then, and then to this 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 and, to this and so on and so forth. And I came up with roughly about 289. Yours might be a little more or a little less. Note I said a little more or a little less. And then I did the same thing for the male and yours might be a little more or a little less. Right? So it is obvious, however, to everyone that the highest number of death in the population that was sampled is, of course, males. Because by my stuff, we are coming in at 345. I remember that is per 100. All right? So we want to be clear here that the male, we are having more males dying than we do have females. Now, what is the cause of that? How do we get that? It says suggest, it's, an suggest, it's a suggestion, but we have to bear in mind that a suggestion should be plausible. We can't just take up, take up anything from the sky and say, oh, it was because of electrocution. Yeah, people die from electrocution. Oh, it's because of drowning. Those are not plausible. So those would not have been good answers for a suggestion. No, you couldn't put drowning or electrocution. No, 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 no. That would be out. Not a good suggestion. However, stress is a good suggestion. Being overweight is another good suggestion. Persons being smokers, that's another good, good suggestion. Poor diet. That's also another good suggestion. Lack of exercise. That's also another good suggestion. So these are plausible suggestions. So a suggestion does not mean just about anything. It must be something that is associated with what we're looking at. We can't say for sure which was the cause, but we know one of these could have been a plausible cause. Say two trend that can be observed from the data in the graph, other than the difference in the number of death in male and female. So here it is saying, other than what we looked at above, with the difference in male and female, that is what this refers to. Don't get carried away. The deaths in male and female. That's what we looked at at the top here. We are supposed to look at some trends. Now, the trend is always going to be about death because it's about death and the disease. So, what I did look at is more persons died from diabetes between age 4, 55 and 64. Let us look at that. So, if you look here, you're having more persons dying. If you were supposed to add these, you have more persons dying than each of these categories. And if you were supposed to have these, you're seeing that um, just the same. So more persons are dying at an older age than do younger persons. Another thing I looked at, though it said too, the chance of death increase as both sex gets older. So as you increase, as you go up in age, you will observe that the chances of you suffering from either of this these diseases, uh, the chance become greater. You're seeing that increase there. So that's another trend that we picked up, right? Chance of you, um, of course, is greater. Another thing we looked at here, it is less likely to die from the disease when you are young. So if when you increase in age with an increase in age the chances for you dying from the disease is greater then it is also true that at a younger age you are less likely to suffer from these diseases or to die from these diseases all right so those are some trends that we are picking up another thing we looked at here is that the death rate for male is higher for male with diabetes at age 55 to 64 
than those with hypertension. So we are realizing that males are dying with diabetes in this age band than do males in this age band for hypertension. So these are trends that we are seeing based on what's on the graph. So you see, it was not as difficult as you thought it was. So if you hopped over this question, I can just imagine now you're holding on to your head to saying, oh, wow, it was really that easy? Usually it is. Remember, study to show thyself approved. Let's look at the other question. This is our final question. Say two risk factors other than age and gender, which is reflected in our graph above, that would contribute to the development of both hypertension and diabetes. Now, if you have a sedentary lifestyle, one where you are just always, they call them couch potato, uh, offended, you just sit, you never exercise, there's no real physical activity, you are just always sitting and eating, uh, that would, of course, uh, get you into the circle of diabetes and hypertension. If you are always stressed for whatever reason, you're stressed because of a partner, you're stressed because of uh, your bills, you're stressed because of exam, you're stressed because of your sibling, you're stressed because of where you live or where you don't live, you're stressed because of bus condition, you're stressed because of mosquitoes, whatever stress it is that continue to be, that could also put you in the line of developing diabetes or hypertension. Smoking is another big risk factor. And of course, if there's a family history, then it is considered that you're going to be more likely to develop one of these. Now, that's all we have for today for question number one from the January 2024 Human and Social Biology paper. We do recommend that persons who are doing biology follow these papers, likewise those who are doing human and social biology. Because all that have been covered in this question is a part of the biology syllabus. Until we next meet, remember to study to show thyself approved. I love to invite you to my Amazon channel where you can find some of our kids' books, lab books, etc. And if you are not yet signed to a teacher for next year, you are in grade 10, then remember, we offer personal tutoring on line wherever you are in the caribbean that's what we specialize in i want to say thanks to all our private students who would have made these videos possible for other students who are on youtube again to our private students that we have been tutoring privately one-on-one -on -one, i want to say a big thank you and a big shout out to you all right across the caribbean thanks much again i'm mr wilson until we next meet what good people. Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today.